Hello guys, uh, today we will going to discuss uh, funds flow statement in your management accounting subject. This management accounting subject is meant for 6th semester BCom students and also 5th semester, 5th BBA, that is a Bachelor of Business Administration students also. The same subject uh, is meant for 5th semester BBA and 6th semester BCom students. Today, what we will going to learn? We will going to learn a chapter called Funds Flow Statement. What is this funds flow statement and what is the learning objective from this chapter? Funds flow statement. Let us divide this into funds and funds flow and then we have to prepare funds flow statement. Let's understand what is the meaning of fund. See, meaning of fund is nothing but it means all financial resources. All financial resources in the form of men, material, money, machinery and etc. is called as funds. That means, funds means all financial resources, whatever the financial resources which is coming into the business, which is coming going out of the business, which is coming into the business, which is going out of the business, which we call it as a funds. Funds is also called as working capital. Funds is also called as working capital. What is working capital? See, we have, every business have got two types of working capital. I mean capital, two types of capital. One is working capital, other one is called as fixed capital. Then, what is working capital? What is fixed capital? See, working capital is nothing but the capital which is used in running the day-to-day -day business. In running the day-to-day -day business, whatever the capital which is required by a business, we call it as a working capital. Then, what is fixed capital? Fixed capital is a capital which is invested on the assets which are used in the business. See, working capital, we the capital which is used for day to day business for running the day to day business whatever the capital which you require say for example you want to buy the material you want to pay for labor you want to pay for certain expenses say for all these things you need capital such capital procuring such capital for running the day to day business we call it as a working capital then what is fixed capital the capital which is invested on the fixed assets or capital assets. That means if we procure the capital for a long period, such long period capital, whatever you procure from the public or whatever the sources you have, that will go into invest on the assets which are used in the business. Say for example, you want land and building, you want plant and machinery, you want, you want furnitures and fixtures, you want motor vehicles, see, you want patents and copyrights, all these are all fixed assets, which is not meant for sale, which is meant for used in the business. See, you want a place of, for doing the business, you want land and building, which is not meant for sale, which is used in the business. You need plant and machinery to produce the goods and services. Then, you need plant and machinery, which is not meant for sale. See, your majority of investments, okay, long term money which you have procured from the different resources or different sources, that amount will be invested on a capital asset that is called as a fixed capital. That is how we can differentiate working capital and fixed capital. Now, let us not talk much about the fixed capital, let us talk about the working capital. What I told you, funds is also called as working capital. See, there are two types of working capital here. There are two types of working capital here. One is called as gross working capital. Other one is net working capital. Now, let us understand what is gross working capital and net working capital. 
gross working capital is nothing but aggregate of all the current assets aggregate of all current assets is called as gross working capital what is the meaning of aggregate aggregate is nothing but total working capital that is total current assets that means if you take this as a meaning this is called total current assets now definitely will have a doubt or question sir what is this current assets sir current assets are those assets which are used in the business and which can be converted into liquid form cash form within a maximum of 1 year that means those assets which will be in the form of assets that can be converted into cash within a maximum of 1 year is called as current assets then what are such current assets see current assets i'll give you the list of current assets stock we also call it as inventory stock may be in the three forms one is stock in materials stock in work in progress stock in finished goods any form of stock it may be in the material work in progress or finished goods we consider or we take it as a stock only then we take uh, debtors who is a debtor debtor is a, a person who owes money to the business who owes money to the business so such a money which we are expecting from our customers expecting from our customers who is called as a debtor if you sell goods on credit to your customer your customer need to pay after some time so you will be expecting money from your customer your customer becomes debtor when you sell goods on credit this is what we call as debtor then bills receivable bills receivable so stock debtors bills receivable and uh, cash in hand cash at bank these two are already in the liquid form so we consider it as a absolute liquid okay what is this absolute liquid asset also so next uh, short term investments short term investments prepaid expenses prepaid expenses outstanding income we also call it as accrued income we also call it as accrued income see these are the current assets so current assets includes stock debtors bills receivable cash in hand cash at bank short term investments prepaid the in expenses and outstanding incomes all these if you put together if you take the total that total current assets is called as gross working capital now let us understand what is net working capital what is net working capital see net working capital is nothing but current assets minus current liability current assets minus current liabilities now these are the current assets from these current assets if you minus current liability whatever the amount you get that is called as net working capital now we know what are the current assets now let us understand what are the current liabilities what are the current liabilities first current liability is a creditors now let me tell you what is current liability the liability which a business need to pay within a maximum of 1 year within a maximum of 1 year is called as creditor or current liability within a maximum of 1 year if any liability a business want to pay such liability is called as current liability in these current liabilities first one is creditor 
so creditor is a first liability next one is bills payable bills payable bank overdraft bank overdraft outstanding expenses dividend payable tax payable advance income advance income all these are all or any provision against current assets see if we take these out the sum of the 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 creditors who is a creditor a creditor is a person to whom the business is due if business is due to someone who is called as a creditor that means when you purchase when a business purchase goods from the supplier on credit then business is due money to the creditor who is called as a creditors or a supplier also bills payable when you buy the goods and given any promissory note stating in future i will pay promising to pay in future then that bill or a note is also called as a bills payable which we their business need to pay bank overdraft when you have drawn over and above your balance available in your current account in the business then that is also called as bank overdraft outstanding expenses you have taken services your business has taken services but for which we have not yet paid yet to pay so yet to pay means it is liability that we need to pay dividends payable see usually business starts from april and ends with 31st march of next year and during the profits earned in that particular year that will be declared as a, a dividends in the end of this uh, period end of the year and which will be going to pay in future i mean to say that in the next year so for that particular financial year dividends payable is a liability it is not a pay tax payable you even the tax also you need to pay current year's profits on profits you have to pay tax the tax will be payable in the next year advance income if you have received any income in advance for the services which you will going to render in future if your customer doesn't want your service then whatever the income you received in advance has to be repaid then provision against current assets say for example when you sell goods on credit all your creditor i mean say that all your customers may not be a good debtors may not be a good debtors see every business will have some kind of you know a risk in collection of debts if any debts become bad we need to keep such bad debts provision also that is also considered as a current liability now this current assets minus current liability current assets minus current liability is called as net working capital or if you take summation of current assets or sigma of current assets is nothing but total current assets is called as gross working capital so you may be having a doubt sir why you are explaining so many okay uh, so many so many things at this point of time because when you want to understand what is fun when you want to understand what is fun definitely we need to understand funds is nothing but working capital that's the reason we have explained uh, all these uh, you know uh, current assets and current liability part now we'll go to the second part of this what is flow of fund what is the meaning of flow of fund see every business organizations will have flow of fund without flow of fund business cannot run see it may be that is called as a change in working capital flow of fund is nothing but flow of fund it may increase or decrease you find some change in the working capital that working capital changes it may be increase or it may be decrease it may be inflow of working capital or it may be outflow of working capital so that is what we call it as flow of funds now as a business organization as a business organization wants to know how 
this flow of funds happened during the year compared to last year to this year compared to last year to current year how these funds have flow floated in the business how these funds have floated in the business whether the funds have increased in the business or decreased in the business when you compare with two years information now we need to understand when we want to prepare funds flow statement before preparation of funds flow statement we should understand how these funds these financial resources arises in the business arises in the business all financial resources in the form of men material money machinery how it comes into the business how it goes out of the business see according to me the flow of funds happens with three major three major activities what are those three major activities see first major activity is working capital first major is working capital through working capital you get funds into the business you have the funds will go out of the business so through the working capital you find some flow of funds in your business second one is profits say through the profits the company or a business organization will have flow of funds with whether it may be inflow of funds or outflow of funds and the third one is through by financing through by financing and investing through by financing and investing what is financing financing is nothing but if the business requires any finance definitely they procured finance from the public by issue of shares it may be equity share preference share or debentures if company need some more capital definitely they go for a loan it may be mortgage loan it may be long term loan so like this we go for financing at the same time whatever the the money or the liabilities the long term loans or from the debentures what we have borrowed sometimes we need to repay for them that means to say financing is nothing but procuring the money from the public or from the different financial resources and repayment of these finance whenever the company is not required or whenever the time expires in paying the liability that is called as financing investing when you have so much of money finance which is coming into the business what you will do you will not keep it in the locker you will not keep it in the treasure box definitely what you will do you will go to invest these finance on some assets or capital assets or fixed assets so these amount of finance which you going to invest either on the fixed assets or you will going to buy a long term investments see this is what we call as investing act so that means the funds flow happens with these three major activities so this funds flow statement happens in these three major activities now if you prepare if you understand these three steps or three major activities definitely you will going to understand funds flow statement very easy okay now what we will going to learn is we will going to learn the first activity how the working capital okay changes how working capital changes which is which leads to flow of funds now let us take some uh, pro forma in knowing whether increase in the working capital in the business or decrease in the working capital in the business that is called as a changes in the working capital now when we want to prepare or know changes in the working capital we need to know a statement called as statement of changes in working capital statement of changes in working capital
guys, uh, this is the first statement that we need to prepare. That's called as uh, changes in working capital. That is, statement showing changes in working capital. In the examination, sometimes you will be asked for six months just to prepare statement showing changes in working capital. What we will try to find out in this statement is we find out how much is increased or decreased in the working capital compared to last year to current year. See, you will be given two years information. Two years information will be given to you. With the help of this two years information, we need to find out how much is increased or decreased in the working capital. As I told you, we find out the net working capital, that is taking the total current assets, taking the total current line, the current asset minus current line, A minus B, we get net working capital. If this net working capital of 2017 and 18, if we find out, we will find out whether there is an increase or decrease. Say for example, if uh, the net working capital is 10 rupees or 10 in 2017, and 15 in 2018, we can easily find out there is an increase of 5 in the current year. Am I right or not? So that means 10 to 15, there is an increase. Suppose if in 2017, if it is 10, and 2018, if it is 5, definitely we can say there is a decrease in the working capital. So this is how we need to find out the changes in the working capital by preparing statement showing changes in the working capital. Now let us see if this statement is uh, asked in the question or not in the question paper. So but before we go for doing or preparing the what is that uh, changes changes in the working capital, let us understand how the second activity the flow of funds happens through the profits. So now, for this purpose, we need to prepare an account called as adjusted profit and loss account. We call it as adjusted profit and loss account to find debit and credit. See, what is this adjusted profit and loss account? I will explain to you. Don't worry. It's very simple and easy. See, we know that every business organization prepares profit and loss account at the end of the year. At the end of the year, every business organization prepares profit and loss account. And they find out the profits at the end of the year. That profit, whatever the business is calculated, ascertained, that profit may not be in the form of cash. In the form of cash, say for example, I have earned in during the year 2018, I earned 1 lakh rupees of profit. And if you physically check that profits is there in the business or no, if you want to find out that profit 1 lakh rupees, which is there in the cash box of 1 lakh rupees or no, you will have a surprise. What is the surprise? Definitely you will not have exactly 1 lakh rupees. How sir? Why sir? Because profit is 1 lakh rupees in 2018. How that 1 lakh rupees won't be there in the cash box? Because you find some difference in the cash balance available in the form of profit in the cash box. Then what are the reasons? Why it happens? That means the cash balance, it may be more than 1 lakh rupees or less than 1 lakh. It is an example I'm telling you. In 2018, 1 lakh rupees profit you are that 1 lakh rupees profit should be in the form of cash. But in the actual scenario, your cash will not be 1 lakh rupees. It may be more or it may be less. Now, question arises, is any of the, the employees or the cashier might have misappropriated cash? No, that is not the case here. See, why? Why? there is a, a difference in cash balance in the form of profit is showing in the business that we need to find out. For that purpose, we will go to prepare adjusted profit and loss account. See, for each and every thing, 
you will be given two years information say 2017 and 2018 see for example by balance brought down it may be opening balance of your profit and loss count that means in during the 2017 end of the 2017 assume that you have some amount of profit that amount of profit is the last year profit say 1 lakh rupees was the last year profit if that becomes a uh, two balance carry down suppose if this is showing 1 lakh rupees and if it is showing 2 lakh rupees what is the meaning of it the meaning of it is very simple last year the profit and loss account was showing 1 lakh rupees this year it becomes 2 lakh rupees that means this 2 lakhs is including the last years that means in this 2 lakh rupees last year 1 lakh is also included that means how much profit you earn during the year 2018 is 1 lakh rupees only because 2 lakh minus 1 lakh you earn 1 lakh rupees of profit that 1 lakh rupees of profit should be supposed to be in the cash box but it won't be 1 lakh rupees it may be more than 1 lakh or it may be less than 1 lakh now we have to find out what is the reason because we want to know actually how much profits in the form of cash in the form of funds the business is earned during the year that is what we want to find out it's not 1 lakh rupees we earned because 2 lakhs is showing last current year last year it is showing 1 lakh current year profit is 1 lakh rupees we cannot take it as a funds as a 1 lakh rupees during the year because which may be more or which may be less now we will going to learn how this will be having changes in this profits or cash balance now because of two reasons one is called as you your business organization may be show some of the expenses which we call it as non cash expenses so what is this non cash expenses non cash expenses some appropriations to your profits see a non cash expenses some appropriation to your profit now let me tell you what are those non cash expenses and appropriations appropriations means what in the profit when you are preparing your profit and loss count after you get your net profit you need to transfer to your reserve am i right or no so that means say assume that from this example one lakh is the profit you earned in the 18 of before you transfer to profit and loss account in the balance sheet you might have transferred some amount of profit towards the reserve that reserve is also profit we want to know before transfer to the reserve what was the profit that is what the purpose we are preparing at just the profit and loss account. so therefore first item in the debit side is transfer to reserve all we got it the next one is called as goodwill written off preliminary expenses written off discount on issues next is transfer to reserve goodwill written off preliminary expenses written off discount on issues these are all these are the some uh, appropriation and these are the non cash expenses one more is that that's called as depreciation on fixed assets then any tax payable that is provision for tax any dividends payable any expenses due see these are the some of the expenses which are non cash in nature what is this non cash in nature which is not actually paid to someone which is not paid to someone what is expenses according to me expenses is nothing but amount paid for the services taken amount paid for the services avail 
If I have taken some service, definitely I have to pay. For that services, I am not getting anything, I am just getting services. It is my expenses I am paying. If I pay, then it is called as an expenses. If it is not yet paid, it is not an expenses for me for, for that particular time, for that particular period. So these are the some of the non-cash expenses and also appropriation to the profits. And now I will tell you what are those are non-operating expenses. See, non-operating expenses means, say, for example, if uh, I am a uh, computer merchant, a computer businessman, if I purchase computer and sell my computers, then that is what the profits I get. Purchasing computer, selling computer is a, a business of mine and I am getting profit from that. Suppose, if I have a old furniture and sold that furniture for a loss, it's not my regular course of business. If I have a, a old machinery or a plant and machinery, if I sell it for a loss, definitely it is not my regular course of business to sell plant and machinery for a loss. At the same time, if I sell computer, computer selling computer is my business. So thereby I can consider it as a business. So here, what is not operating expenses, operating losses is, if I incur any losses selling the assets of a business, which were used in the business, Definitely it is considered as non-operating expenses. I can take it as loss on sale of assets. Loss on sale of assets. See, students, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Out of these 9 items in your examination, definitely you will find minimum 3 to 4 adjustments. Minimum three to four adjustments definitely you will find and preparation of adjusted profit and loss account is uh, which plays a, a very important key role without this you cannot prepare funds flow safe now let us come to the credit side okay credit side see debit all expenses and losses always profit and loss account is what type of account nominal account what nominal account says debit all expenses and losses debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains. Now, let us understand what type of profits we take. Do we take uh, uh, business profits here? Business gains here? We never take business profits or business gains. We take only a non-business profits. Non-business profits means what? If I sell computer for a profit, it's my business. If I sell my furniture for a profit, then selling furniture is not my business. Selling old plant and machinery and getting profit, earning profit is not my business. Then, whatever the profits you earn, profits on sale of assets is not your regular course of business. Such profits are considered as non-business incomes and profits. Even profits on sale of investment, profit on sale of investments. It may be like a rent received, dividend received, or income tax refund, or any tax refund is not an income for you. Any tax, any tax refund, I will write it here only. Any tax refund is not an income. See, when you pay the, your business tax, say for example, sales tax, you pay 10,000 rupees extra. Extra uh, sales tax you pay to the government. And government is a refunded, return the 10,000 rupees of tax. Is it an income for you? No way. It's not an income for you. So in the similar way, any income tax is refund or any tax refund should be taken as a non-business expense, I mean profits or incomes. Now, the purpose of preparing this adjusted profit and loss is, see, after knowing so much of uh, incomes, profits which you earn, which you earn, before the adjustments, this profit is, whatever the profit which we have shown here, is a after appropriation or after adjustments. Now what we are doing is, we are going it back 
That means to say, we are retrieving it back. We are adding it back. All these are expenses, non-operating and non-cash expenses to this profit. So therefore, your debit side will be more than the credit side. From this total credit side, if you deduct all these points, the balance amount we call it as funds from operation. That means to say, actually, this is the amount of profits which a business earn, which a business earn. So if, now, as I told you, one lakh of profit in the beginning of the year was here, two lakh was a profit. We thought of there is only one lakh rupees of profit which we earned during the year. But actually says this is the amount of profits what we earned during the year. The purpose of knowing this is we want to know what exactly the flow of fund, whether it is there is a there was an inflow of fund or an outflow of fund. Now, based on these are two statements, let us uh, uh, prepare or uh, let us solve some problems. Let us solve some problems which were given in the question paper. We will try to solve uh, at least uh, two to three years of question paper and we will Okay. Guys, 2018 question paper though. It's a 2018 six marks question paper. Ask for six marks. Please kindly write this on a paper. If you write this question, it becomes very easy for me to explain also because question will be in front of you. I can easily explain it. Okay? Question number eight, uh, five. See, now we are going to solve 2018 six marks question. I will just uh, uh, read out this question. Prepare a schedule of changes in working capital. Schedule is nothing but statement showing changes in working capital from the following. And it is given two years information, particulars on 31st March 2017 and 31st March 2018. Now guys, everything is on the board. Just what we need to do is we have to identify what are the current assets, what are the current liabilities. What are the current assets, what are the current liabilities. Now, while reading Excel, we will try to write it on the board, so that, write it on the paper, so that it becomes easy for us to understand and as well as identify. Now, bank overdraft, is it a current asset or a current liability? See, bank overdraft, definitely it is a current liability. There is a 8,000 rupees in 2017 and nothing in 2008. Creditors. We have 40,000 rupees in 2017 and 45,000 rupees in 2018. Next year, bills payable 5,000 rupees in 2017 and 8,000 rupees in 2018. Next year, outstanding expenses 3,000 rupees in 2017 and 5,000 rupees in 2018. Debtors, it is an asset, right? Current asset. So, debtors is uh, 20,000 in 2017, 40,000 in 18. Stock, 15,000 rupees in 17 and 25,000 rupees in 2018. Bills receivable is nothing in 2017, 5,000 rupees in 2018. Cash in hand, 1000 in 17 and 8000 in 18. Now, prepaid rent. See, I told you prepaid rent. Prepaid rent. See, when you pay rent in advance and if you want to vacate that house, you will get back that rent. It is an asset for you. It is something you pay the advance for the uh, house you are taking for or a shop you are taking for rent. When you pay the advance, as the time of vacating your shop, you will get back your deposit or a rent amount which you paid in advance. So definitely it is an asset, right? Whatever you you are getting, you will going to get, that is an asset. So thereby, I will write it here as a 
find prepaid rent it's a 2000 in 17 3000 in 18 that's all the information is given now with the help of this we need to find out whether there is an increase in the working capital or decrease in the working capital see first what step i have taken is identify what are the current assets what are the current liabilities just write current assets and current liabilities of 2017 and 18 and whatever is left that is nothing is there okay now what we will try to do here now is we'll see whether the, check the totals first okay check the totals first 2 plus 1 3 plus 5 8 and 38,000 this is 5 plus 5 10 plus 18 18 plus 3 is 21 2 carries and uh, 4 plus 4 is 8 81,000 now let us check the current liabilities also 3 plus 8, 11 plus 5 is 16, 1 carries and 5, 56,000. 45 plus 8 is 53, 53 plus 5 is 58. Now, current asset minus current line, A minus B, is called as what? Networking capital. A minus B is equals to networking capital. Now, current asset in 2017 is 38,000. Current liability is 56,000. Current liability is more, that means you are getting a, a negative networking capital. I will write it in the brackets. So 56,000 minus 38,000, you will have 18,000 rupees of negative networking capital. But here there is a positive because current asset is more, current liability is less. Now 81,000 minus 58,000 is 11 minus 8 is 3, 7 minus 5 is 2. That means compared to 2017, there was a negative working capital. When it comes to 2018, it becomes positive. How it is possible? Now, is a negative amount is there or a positive amount is more? Definitely positive amount. So I write this 23,000 rupees in the both the columns. Yeah? Now, I will check 23,000 minus 23,000 is cash. Now, what definitely there is an increase. How much was the increase? I will show you. See, 23,000, 23,000 minus 18,000. Minus 18, what type of 18,000 it is? It is a minus 18, minus of minus 18,000. I will show you. Uh, here, I will show you here. Sorry, I am erasing this. See, usually how we take the changes is current year minus last year. Right? Current year minus last year. What was the current year profit is 23,000 minus. What is the last year's profit? There is no profit. There is a loss. That means minus of 18,000. Correct. Now minus of minus. Minus into minus what happens? It becomes plus. Now 23,000 plus 18,000 is 51,000. 3 plus 1 is 41,000. So that means there is an increase in the working cap. There is a, an increase in the working cap. This is what we have calculated. How we got it guys? How we got this 41,000? 40, 41,000 we got it like 23,000 minus into minus of 18,000. Minus into minus becomes plus. Now 23 plus 18 is 41,000 is the increase in the working cap. Now we got the 41,000 rupees as increase in the working cap. So what to do with these two columns? Don't worry about it. Now, usually current assets, current assets will take it as increase or decrease. How do we find out? 2018 current asset minus 2017 current asset, 25,000 minus 15,000. Just you can, common sense, minimum common sense. Compared to 2017, 18 it is increased. How much it is increased? 10,000 rupees is increased. Right? 20,000 to 40, there is a, an increase of how much? 
20,000 rupees. Now, there was nothing bills receivable in that 17. There is a 5,000 rupees in 18. That means, again, there is an increase in the working capital. Here, cash at bank, 1,000 to 8,000. There is an increase in the working capital. Here also, 2,000 to 3,000. There is an increase of working capital. Now, when it comes to, that means, in current assets, if there is an increase from last year to current year, we write in the increase column. If it is decreased, definitely we write in the decrease column. If it increased from last year to current year, we write it in the increase column. If it is decreased from last year to current year, we write the amount in the decrease column, difference amount. But in case of current life, okay, the rule is opposite. What is that opposite? If here, if you take creditors increase from 17 to 18, but the difference amount we write it in the decrease column. Actually, sir, actually there is an increase. We should write it in the increase column, right? No. This is a current liability. In case of current liability, rule goes reverse. This is a reverse rule. If there is an increase in the current liability, we write the difference amount in the decrease column. Now, here also there is an increase of 3000 rupees. We write decrease column as a 3000 rupees difference amount. Now, if you check here, 8000 there was bank overdraft. Nothing in 2018. That means we repaid. There is a decrease. If it is a decrease in what current liability, we write it in the increase in the current liability or increase in working cap. Here there is no nothing this to. Okay. Now what we do is we check with the increase column amount. Increase column amount 8, 9, 16, 21, 2 carries 5. This is 8. Uh, one more is there, outstanding expenses. There is an increase, but we write it in the decrease column. I'm sorry, this becomes 10,000. Okay, see, outstanding expenses, 3,000 to 5,000. There is a, an increase, but we write it in the decrease column. Now, the total in the increase column is 51,000 rupees. The total in the decrease amount is 10,000, which is more, increase column 51,000 is more, Therefore, we write 51,000 here, yeah? 51,000 here, yeah? 51,000 minus 51,000 is dash, 51,000 minus 10,000 is 41,000. Now check with this, this answer and this answer is coming correct. Right now, now this is a small verification. First we have to solve this which is given in the question, then you just take it. I will explain quickly. In case of current asset, last year to current year, if it is increased, we write it in the increase column. Last year to current year, if it is decreased, we write it in the decrease column. In case of current liability, reverse. If it is increased, we write it in the decrease column. If it is decreased, we write it in the increase column. Got it guys? So this is about the changes in the working capital. Okay? This is of uh, 2018 question which is uh, given in the year 2018. Let's solve one more question. Guys, this is also 2018 question paper for 6 marks. Uh, very simple question. Just uh, take a piece of paper or a book, pen, please write a question so that whenever I am solving on the board, you, will, you can keep this problem and uh, you can understand better. Guys, uh, uh, this question is also given in 2018 for 6 marks. This is also given for 2018 for 6 marks. Okay, so in 2018, they have given 6 marks, 6 marks, totally 12 marks in the same chapter that is in the parts for statement. Now, let us understand what is this question. This is question number 6 given in 18. From the following details, find out the Funds from operation, funds lost in operation. So when we have debit is more than credit, we get funds from operation. 
when credit itself is more than debit, then we get funds lost in business or operations. That uh, will not arise, just I am telling you. From the following details, find out funds from operation. See, yeah? funds from operation. When you are given, when you are asked to prepare funds from operation, definitely we need to prepare adjusted profit and loss. Please don't forget this. When he is asked to prepare, find out funds from operation, we need to prepare adjusted profit and loss account. Now let us see, he is given 2017 and 18 information. Profit and loss account balance as on 1 4 2017. So that means, and profit and loss account balance as on 31st March 2018. That means, the opening balance of profit and loss account as on 1 4 2017. 1 4 2017 profit and loss is 6 lakhs 54,450. This is what is given as opening. And closing is 7 lakhs 45,650. This is a, the profit and loss account of opening balance and closing balance. Depreciation on plant and machine. See, where do you find depreciation? You can find depreciation here. Just write this uh, pro forma. I'm filling the blanks, that's all, nothing else. Just you need to buy hat this profile. Depreciation on plant and machinery, you are here it is 47, 740. Profit on revaluation. See, profit on sale of asset or profit on revaluation, everything being same. We can write profit on revaluation. Any profits will be taken here. 430. Okay. Goodwill written off, see yeah. goodwill written off is here, yeah. 25,070. Preliminary expenses written off, you see yeah. 51,250. Provision for tax, provision for tax, 25,520. Proposed dividend is nothing but dividend paid, 52,250. Profit on sale of building, we can write profit on sale of building as here only. Profit on sale of building is 65,560. Dividend received, here it is. Dividend received is 41,140. Interest on investment. See, it, is, it may be profit on sale of investment or interest on investment. We write it here is 9050. That's all the points is given. See, that's all. This question is solved. What we did? Just we fill in the blank. There is no discount on, there is no transfer to reserve, there is no expenses due, there is no loss on sale of asset, there is no tax refund, and uh, there is no reinvestment. Right? So, if you write this pro forma, you will get an easily 6 marks without any doubt. Now, if you check with this, definitely you will find debit is more than credit. How you are saying, sir? Because here it is 7,45, it is 7,54, almost 90, plus here it is almost 2 lakhs more is there. So, therefore, we will find out debit side total first. Side is nine lakhs forty seven thousand four eighty nine lakhs forty seven thousand four eighty. Now direct all these things minus it from this total minus all these numbers minus six lakh four fifty four thousand four fifty thirty four four thirty sixty five sixty. 90, 50, 41, 40. So you have 1,42,850 rupees of funds from operation. For this, you will get 6 months guys. So according to him, there was a, a profit of, see, last year profit was this much and current year it becomes 1,45,650. According to him, 7,45,650. Minus 
six fifty four four fifty. According to him, there was only ninety one thousand two hundred rupees profit, which is earned, but actual profit, actual funds which we have earned from the operation of businesses, one lakh forty two thousand eight fifty. So this is how we will get for six months. Okay, just keep writing this, and if you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay. and please uh, subscribe sai study circle and forward this to your friends and share with your friends